Welcome back to The Exchange. Uh, for today's Tech Check, it's all about the marquee names reporting after the bell today. Alphabet and Microsoft, of course. I shouldn't frame it like this, but who will come out on top? Eric Sheridan is Managing Director at Goldman Sachs. He covers Alphabet for us. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Keith Weiss is here to preview Microsoft today. And from the investor side, James Chuckmuck is here. He's co-founder of Clockwise Capital. On set for all of this as well is our own Deirdre Bosa. Deirdre, welcome to you. Let's start with Alphabet coming off three straight quarters of earnings declines. They recently announced drastic cost cuts, including their first major mass layoff since going public. They're also shoveling cash into artificial intelligence. And Eric, you say AI is one of the key things to watch here. But how much is that really going to show up in today's report? I think there are going to be three important components to uh, the report tonight. Number one is going to be the strength or uh, cyclicality in the advertising business that comes through in search and YouTube. That's probably going to be the biggest driver of the incremental results uh, tonight. Second will be the cost-cutting initiatives that you referenced, how that flows through numbers beyond just the report tonight in Q1 and how it moves deeper into the year and maybe even changes some of the trajectory on costs going out to 2024. And then last Lastly, I would say the AI initiative. You know, the company has been much more on the front foot uh, in the last two to three weeks in terms of press coverage of their AI initiatives and putting on display some of what they try to build for the long term. And that contrasts with six, eight, ten weeks ago when I think the company was was a little bit more on the back foot uh, and Microsoft had a little bit more of the offensive on sure. the narrative. Sure. Okay. They, you have a buy rating, a 128 price target, Deirdre. A lot of people focus on the valuation, which I think around 23 mm -hmm. times, maybe 10 points lower than Microsoft. But maybe the discount's warranted. I don't know. I was actually kind of surprised to hear Eric say that they're not on the back foot anymore because I feel like they're even more on the back foot, really? actually. Remember the New York Times article that said that Samsung was actually considering yes. possibly Bing for their search engine? That is a very big deal. And they said that there was panic inside of Google. So I'm not sure if any of the analysts are going to ask about it on the call tonight. But there is this sense that has really been the narrative this year is that Google has had to play catch up. They continue to do so. They continue to have to protect that moat at all costs. And Senator Pichai is very good at saying that they're going to be responsible. They have to balance the cautiousness with the boldness. Is that going to be enough for investors at a time when they also have to cut costs? It's a bit of a paradox, right? they got to cut costs, but then get really excited about this future innovation. Right, invest heavily to keep up. All right, Chuck Muck, I know you're big on Amazon, but if I had to press yeah. you on Google versus Microsoft, who would you rather today? Definitely Microsoft. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm on Team Deidre as it relates to, uh, to Alphabet. I, I think it's going to be a back half story. I think it's going to be... Uh, a lot of opaqueness as it relates to the uh, the acceleration that we need to see on the search side, as well as uh, kind of re resumption of growth on, on the YouTube side. And I don't think we're going to get that much clarity on the cost side of the picture. It's a lot of generic language to date, and, I, and this is not a company that really likes to get granular and quantify yeah. uh, the kinds of things that investors are nervous about. All right, Microsoft, me... you know. Yeah, I'll I was going to say, let me come back to you on Microsoft in just a moment, actually, because I really take your point. And I just want to give Eric a chance to respond before we let you go, Eric, to what Deirdre and uh, James just said. We laid out um, about a month and a half ago that no one has invested more in AI than Alphabet has over the last five years. So Milper Chai first talked about it being an AI first company at Google I.O. in 2017. I wouldn't measure who wins or loses AI based on the first three to six months uh, of this narrative. I think a lot of this uh, story still is to be told in the years ahead. All right, Eric Sheridan, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time joining us from Goldman today. As we turn to Microsoft, also on deck, facing slowing growth in the cloud and sharp slide in demand for things like personal computers. Of course, perhaps arguably at the forefront of the AI race. We turn to Keith for opportunity in this stock. Um, talk to us about what your expectations are and, and what do you say to people who go, well, but it's, it's expensive. Yeah, I would say compared to the opportunity, it's not expensive as of yet. Um, like you were talking about, generative AI is a massive opportunity for Microsoft on a go forward basis. And we like their positioning because they benefit not just on the platform side of the equation, hosting the GPT model um, that powers chat GPT, but also a lot of other products. But they also have a broader application suite where they can monetize that through stuff like Copilot for GitHub or uh, Viva Sales. There's going to be a co-pilot for Office 365 at some point that's going to be coming out. So they have both the underlying technology, but also a lot of the avenues to monetize it on a go-forward basis. That's going to expand out the opportunity a lot and more than justify the valuation, in my view. James? I'd agree with all those points, but we do take pause a little bit on the valuation side. I mean, it's still at 10 times sales. Um, the, the comps are, are negative right now. I mean, you're, you're talking about 
decelerating growth uh, on the cloud side. Still question marks as to when we're going to get that resumption yeah. of growth on personal computing as well as gaming. And and at the end of the day, you know, the AI question is is a big one and it's probably going to be material for all the companies that we're talking about today. But, you know, it, it's still very, very early days. So yeah. we like it, you know, we like it into the quarter, but it's, it, it's, it's the, given the valuation, it's certainly not a top five position. Georgia? I think we said early about five times in this conversation. It is very, very early days. And what we're going to get tonight is sort of the near-term risk for Microsoft and Google, by the way, and a lot of that centers on cloud for Microsoft. It is such an indication of how the rest of spending is going in the enterprise world. So if that disappoints, that could be a very big problem. Also, because let's not forget where these companies now stand in terms of the broader marketplace. I mean, concentration in these names has only been increasing this year. So it's going to have major ramifications. And I think a stumble in cloud for Microsoft and Alphabet um, would have major ramifications for that near-term stock price and valuation. And Keith, maybe you can just add a, a comment on the cloud here. And it, obviously, it would seem that Microsoft should recover from it, even if they have one better, because they can tell this great forward story, which even though it's early, is clearly already priced into the, the stock in terms of the multiple. And it's only a couple percentage points off its all-time high. Yeah, and I, I think the tension is definitely there. There's the tension between the, the near-term cyclical pressures on, on cloud, and we talk about that in terms of cloud optimization. We think we're probably halfway, more than halfway through that cloud optimization activity. Um, but then on the other side, there's the much more expansive um, sort of fundamental secular um, opportunity for Microsoft in generative AI and more broadly in AI. Um, I, I, I do think this uh, Azure number is going to be very important for the near-term direction of the stock. But I, I get the sense there's a lot of investors who are waiting in the sidelines who want to be on board with Microsoft, are worried about that deceleration in Azure. Mm -hmm. And when we do start to see that stabilize, I think that should be a good period for the stock. All right. Yesterday, everyone was in the Google basket. Today, it's all about Microsoft. We'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Keith Weiss, James Chuckmuck, and, of course, our own Deirdre Bosa.